Welcome back, everyone, to Misremembering, a Mandela Effect podcast. Wow, podcast. Podcast. My name is Billy. I'm Scott. Welcome, Scott. I'm excited What's for... What's a podcast? I don't know what's a podcast, podcast. You know, it's, again, technical difficulties getting this, <laughs> getting this going. That's all right. We're all good. Um, how are you today, Scott? I'm great. Doing very well. That's I just good. realized when I bring up a web page, it like makes my face look super bright. Oh yeah, I can see that. It looks. <laughs> it looks like uh, when you're in the ring and like the screen gets really <laughs> like she's Samara, I think is her name, right? She's coming out yeah. of the screen at you. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I don't like that. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Uh, we are recording this a few days late. I can give my reasons if we all choose to do so, but for those who don't care, you can skip ahead 20 seconds. For those who do care, you can listen. We usually record on Mondays. Monday, we started, tried to start recording, and my webcam just crapped out. So then we pushed it to Tuesday, which was yesterday, and my dog got out, and we had to go find him. And that took a long time, longer than it needed we to be. We did find him. We did find him. Though. Yep, okay. we did find him, and unfortunately, um, during that whole time, we also had DoorDash delivered, um, which isn't unfortunate. Ooh, sorry about that. We didn't have, uh, you know, it's not unfortunate we were a DoorDash, but when it delivered, it wasn't our order. It was some other what? person's order. Yeah, well, yeah. So... Uh, you know, the dog gets out. My wife is running around the neighborhood looking for it. My kids run their bikes running around. DoorDash shows up. And they're like, hey, DoorDash. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm not actually waiting for you here. Like, that's creepy. I'm like, I'm waiting to see if my kids or my wife have found my dog. And yeah. I just walked down the end of the street, and you just happened to pull up. And she was like, oh, no, not a big deal. She's like, Bill. And, I mean, my name is Billy. So I was like, yeah, Bill. I'm really sorry, though. I got to go. <laughs> I... Just said it like we paid for it, obviously. Like I just said it on the car. I'm gonna see you, see you later. Bye. So I run off, come back. My daughter is holding the bag of Chipotle that we ordered, and it's like just absolutely destroyed. Like the bottom <laughs> of the bag fell out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" So she hands us this like bag that's absolutely destroyed, and. I'm looking at it, I'm like, you didn't order a burrito. We both got bowls. And she was like, oh, maybe they just made mine a bowl or a burrito or whatever. And I was like, this is not the right order. I'm so certain. And she looks at it, not the right order. Just happens to be that my name is Billy, but on our DoorDash account, it's under my wife's name, Maggie. So I wasn't thinking because the dog is out on the loose. She's like, Bill, yeah, that's, a, that's me. Yep, just throw that over there. Yeah. Thanks. You know, so it's frustrating. We're trying to get into hold of Chipotle and they're like, talk to DoorDash. And we're like, well, we ordered through the Chipotle app. You hire DoorDash to actually make your deliveries for you. So, no, I'm talking to you. Yeah. So I end up driving to Chipotle, which is the opposite of why we DoorDashed it or delivered it because we didn't have the time to go do this. So I drive to the store, get our order. I take the original that wasn't ours back and they're like, we're just going to throw it away. You can keep it. And I was like, no, we, if I was going to keep it, I would have just eaten it, but no one eats sofritas. So that's why I'm bringing it back. That's what, that's the order we got was sofritas. <laughs> so whatever. I mean, I, I came home and it was like, we ate, it was late, not a big deal, but we got a refund, full refund. So, hey. um, so we're good. I mean, we technically through all the hassle last night, we got the dog back, got our food finally, but, uh, we made money or I guess so that's just that's got a not free bad. or just got a free meal. However you look at it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> what an adventure yeah. you were on yesterday. Yeah. So now here we are, we're finally recording. And for those who watch on our YouTube channel, we have completely changed the setup. 
the streaming app that we used to actually record and set up all the stuff to make it look like it does was awful, terrible. I think that's why my webcam wasn't working was because of that uh, application. So I got a new one. And because we got the new one, we have new webcam set up. As you can see, I mean, Scott can't see, unfortunately, uh, but he'll see once I send the video to him later. But it's set up a little differently, staggered. Um, the picture does seem to be clearer because we were using Skype before and now we're using this. So it looks much clearer. I think it looks really good. So uh, I'm excited. That's great. I have to take your word for it right now. Take my word for it right now. I, you know, when you see it later, you be the judge. But I'm sure it'll be great. So we're six minutes in. And we haven't said the name of the episode <laughs> because of all the drama that was going on in my life. Um, so this week we are going to be covering the next Mandela Effect topic of the song 1977, We Are the Champions, recorded by Queen. Now, very popular song. Usually when you hear this song, you hear We Will Rock You, and then it rolls straight into We Are The Champions. I feel like that's how I, like in a playlist, sometimes they're just one, they're listed as one song, depending on which application you use, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. So how many times have you heard this song, Scott, you think? In my life? Just, yeah. I mean, it's a ridiculous Gosh. ballpark, but just ballpark it. Uh, 50, maybe more. Oh, God, Scott. 50 times i don't know i feel like i hear the song monthly oh no uh -oh. my webcam has frozen everyone <laughs> it has not fixed itself this is incredible uh, this is we're not going to stop recording i'm just okay, gonna yeah i'm gonna hide it and then i'm gonna try to bring it back and if i can't then i can't it'll be fine It'll be fine. I might just show Scott. I'm just going to show Scott. It'll be great. You're going to see some things moving around on the screen, but it is what it that's is. That's fine. I have met. It's okay. Oh, yeah. that's wrong. Okay, we're good. So, 50. We're, I mean, we're back. Is 50 low? 50 is low. I've probably seen 15 movies that have had this well, song in true. it, and I've probably seen those 15 movies. I mean... Of those 15, let's say I've seen five of them two times. Okay. And of, That's those, fair, of those five, I've probably seen three, 20, because there's one, Mighty Ducks. I've seen a lot. Yes. And that's just from movies. That's not listening to it in a playlist. That's not going to a game where they play it. That's not just like. Okay. I'm saying right. hundreds. If I factor in these things. Yeah. I agree with you. 50s like on the radio or playing it on like you know in my car i've chosen to play this song yeah okay i don't like to play the same song i'm very finicky i hate hearing the same song like multiple times within a week maybe even a month i like to switch it up i i get tired of songs very fast so i i try to you know switch yeah. it up but in movies, you this is in every movie. Every movie that's about a sport yeah. probably has this song on the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, I've I mean, seen a lot of those. I'm saying all time. I probably listened to it 50 times last year just in my car with my kids because they love it. So, okay, well, I mean, I'm going to go I'd ahead and say... I've probably heard it a thousand or more times. Easy. Wow. I'm not that, like old, but I'm also not young, so. That's a lot. It is a lot. But in We Are the Champions, there is the, the line, you know, when they finish, we are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers because we are the champions. Dun, dun. Of the world right absolutely partially right because the mandela effect for this is at the very end of the song they say we are the champions dun dun and 
that's where the song ends. They don't say of the world. It just is like a cliffhanger almost of the song. Now, in the middle of the song, when they do that, they do say of the world. Freddie Mercury sings it. They roll in to the bridge or whatever it is after that. I, you know, the next verse, whatever it is. And that's why people believe that that's how the song actually ends. So there we have the Mandela effect. I personally feel like whether I listen to this or in, like with my kids or not, and I'm singing out loud, I don't know that I've ever noticed it, but I think when the song ends, I'm probably singing of the world, either in my head or out loud, never noticing that the song is not singing along with me. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, I mean, just, you know, it, obviously of the world is clearly in my mind mm -hmm. now you know it's interesting because at first when when we talked about this i was hell bent on going no this is ridiculous because of the world is 100 percent absolutely in the song the end however you do throw me off a little bit because i'm trying to remember like well do i hear them say it at the end and I don't know the answer to that. But what I will say this. It makes sense to say it at the end. It does not make sense not to say it at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, leaving it open like that is, that doesn't make sense to me. Sure. Uh, you know, it's almost like maybe the song got deleted. Like part of the song got deleted. Because when you hear it and it's not there and when you're listening for it and it doesn't show up. It'll rock your world because you're expecting oh, it to be there. And all of a sudden it's just not. So I would agree with you. It from like a writing standpoint, from a production standpoint, why does it not end that way? I don't know. I, I'm looking at your screen here mm -hmm. and I have to say this and perhaps this is a hot take, but I've got to say it. Okay. In this picture of Freddie Mercury, mm -hmm. I, he looks like something out of my nightmare. <laughs> like this, ver this version of Freddie Freddie Mercury chasing you down the street, mustacheless, mustache. You're right, mustacheless. Just complete. Like I don't even know what's going on with his face. I know he has AIDS, so I'm sorry, but I think he has AIDS. Not right? he not, had AIDS. Not when this came out. I don't know. At some point, he had AIDS. I've never seen the movie. <laughs> of course, okay. at some point, he had AIDS. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to see the movie. Uh, I I like Queen a lot. They're one of my favorite bands. But I can't say that I'm intimately, you know, knowledgeable about Freddie Mercury. But this picture that I'm looking at right now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's it's scaring me. It's a little frightening. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with him? I, I think, again, maybe it's the idea that, like, we're so used to seeing him with a mustache that, that without it, without he's, it, yeah, he's, it adds like a weird and his hair is a little bit longer. I think than, stretched. yeah, I it feels almost like Botox too. Like it's been pulled they back. Didn't have Botox. No, but I'm saying like, back. that's kind of what it looks like. Cause like it's been like pulled back a little bit and <laughs> he's wearing this weird black and white spandex. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, not with his chest hair hanging out. How many people are mad right now? No one's mad. No one disagrees with us. No. I don't think anyone disagrees <laughs> with us. But that's not the Mandela effect we're talking about. So <laughs> let's let's refocus ourselves here. So now when we originally talked about this, about doing this episode, you got excited because you texted me and you said, I think I can debunk this. I was intrigued. Yes. Because how do you debunk a Mandela effect? I thought we were about to have proof. But I've but before you and I talked about it, I've done this Mandela effect like I've told people about it. I've pulled it up on Spotify. I've played it. It's not been there. So when you said debunked, I was like, are you going to have proof that like Queen came out and said, yeah, we changed it? Like that's what I was expecting. But that's not what you said. No. So I'll let you. Way, I'll let you explain because this is your your find. It's way less exciting than that. So 
I, I I did my own little research and I started asking people as I get really bright. I started, this is so white, this screen. So I started asking people like, hey, what do you, you know, do you remember this? And do you remember the saying of the world? And of course everyone does because it makes sense. However, it turns out, and I have to thank this random person on Quora, which Norton tells me is not a safe website. So I went here anyways. Um, but somebody named James Pick who is a BA gold card holder. I don't know what that is, but he goes into a lot of detail about this and he explains that there's multiple versions of the song. So if you, there's a greatest hits, he says that the most common version of the song that people hear, especially today, I don't even know if my camera is still on. It says it comes from the queen's greatest hits album. That makes sense. I think that's what I listen to. I think that's what I've listened to. It says, if you bought this on CD or downloaded it, your version does not end with an extra of the world. However, if you bought that same album on vinyl, then it does. So we're not even talking about like, oh, okay, this is multiple, you know, whatever, like on the original album, it says it. No, no, this is just the greatest hits. There are two different versions of the song on the greatest hits. One CD or download doesn't have it, but if you get the vinyl, it does. So that's interesting. It doesn't make sense, but I guess it has to do with the USA version and a version that was released in Europe. And the version that was released in Europe, I guess, does have the of the world on the end of it. And the vinyl version of the greatest hits album has the of the you know of the world because it's the the European version. So if we ask them, so again, I'm going to bring your German friend into this or your friend that lives in Germany. I don't yep. think they're German. They are. Yeah. Yet again, another instance where perhaps asking them to find the Queen Greatest Hits album and playing their version of it. And they may have of the world at the end. So this might just be a continental difference again here. It could be. Um, so, yes, just to backtrack very quickly. I've not heard back from my friend who lives in Germany about the Berenstein Bears. Um, so, yes, this will be one. I'll follow up with him and say, hey, what's up? Give me the Berenstein Bears info I need. Also, um, the song We Are the Champions, how does it end for you? And see what he says. Um, yes. You know, in my research uh, of this, I'm sure you're seeing my screen, Scott, I mean, you know, so we can all be on the same page here. Um what I found was that when they recorded live versions, um, you know, on C for CD or vinyl or tape or whatever, um, and now it's on YouTube, that does include we are, are of the world at the end. And to me, that kind of makes sense because live, like people change things in a live performance, like not like they completely sing a different like like lyrics or whatever, but they do things different, right? Like they feed off the crowd and yep. they give them what they want. And so I could easily see how, okay, you say at the end, but like we're talking the recorded version that I didn't see them live. I wasn't born before 88, so I didn't see them live. So I wouldn't have been able to see this for myself. But everything I've heard personally that's like a recording outside of YouTube has not included that. So it's interesting that you say that what you found shows that it could be a continental difference. I'm going to go ahead and say it's not a continental difference in that when the stacks of vinyl were created, that is when we had this parallel universe thing. And those stacks of vinyl, <laughs> they accidentally didn't remove part of the end so it's there on vinyl but all the digital all the cd the parallel universe wiped that out so that's my theory i i don't want to believe there are multiple versions of this song why what's going back to the berenstein bears thing what's the reason for having multiple versions why uh well, I I don't I agree. I don't think it's a 
so much of a version thing as much as somehow the American, I guess it is a version, but somehow it got cut off. Obviously, it says of the world, they just cut it off. Because when you listen to the song, it does sound like it ends rather abruptly, like almost like they cut it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking they just cut it, but I don't know why they cut it unless, unless this is a theory. I have nothing to back this up. I'm making this up. But when you play a song on radio, it's possible that your song has a time, like there's a, a limit of time. Like you can't play a 10 minute song on the radio. So you have to hit like four minutes or something or four minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. So in order to play both, we will rock you and we are the champions together. Perhaps you have to have that threshold met. And so they had to cut like five seconds off the song or three seconds off the song or whatever to hit some threshold. I don't know if that's true, hmm. but it would make sense. But then I also think, have you ever heard Paradise by the Dashboard Light, the meatloaf song? Uh, that song's like 30 minutes long. I was going to say, that's the long one, right? And they play that on the, they played that on the radio. I don't know if they cut stuff out of it, but they certainly played that on the radio I when I was young. I mean, so good question. So I'd have to look into it, but Freebird, when it came out. There you go. I wonder if the solo was a part of the original recording. Or if sometime at a concert that Leonard Skinner had, they just went off on a solo and people loved it. And so then in like a greatest hits, they added the solo to it, um, which everyone is now in love with the solo. It's in Guitar Hero. Everyone tries to figure out how to play the solo. Everyone screams free bird at every concert because of the solo. Yeah. So... That's interesting, the whole timing thing. But that's so obscure for this song, We Are the Champions, to be cut off seconds, like three to five seconds, because it wouldn't fit in their time frame. That seems a little far-fetched to me. But I could get behind I, it, I, potentially. I don't know. I mean, it's just trying to come up with some explanation for why... They would cut those two words out if they did, like going down the theory that, okay, yeah, they cut that out. But why would they cut that out? It makes no sense otherwise. Like, I don't, I don't, I quite, I don't quite understand why you would make that decision. And if we go down the parallel universe route, then I find it interesting that in almost every single one of these Mandela effect cases, we find some sort of artifact that somehow has existed uh, through the universes. And, and, and with the Berenstein Bears, it's like one video that one man has made it through. And then here we have, oh, all of the albums, the, the vinyl albums, somehow. Yeah. Where is this rift? And why am I so pixelated on my camera? I am looking at this and it looks like I am on a, I've got film grain. You're not too bad in what what's on the my screen, but yeah, okay. it's not. When you're because I when I when you're larger, it definitely is a little grainy. But it's oh, right. it's getting grainier and grainier. I just don't understand what's. Eventually, I'm going to fade into to some sort of just into pixels everywhere. This is the weirdest thing. Yeah. So so here's an interesting thing. So this person claims that this is the original record, the first release of this record, and the record has the lyrics on it. So when you look at it, the song title, we are the champions. And then at the very bottom, the last three lines of the song are of the world. Now, again, this would fit your theory that this is an original. So European version likely, which means that this is going to have of the world, but yep. it is in print it does not look at all like this is something that was altered to me because it's a picture that someone took of the record. So you can even see like the flash in the middle. So I don't know. It, it feels like that's genuine and maybe it's not genuine. Maybe I'm being duped. Um, 
but I don't know. I I guess I just don't understand why. Like, why get rid of it? Like, let's just say this isn't a Mandela effect, which I would like I'd like to take a poll, I guess, of our listeners to see what they think. Is this a Mandela effect or not? Because there's a lot of evidence in for both. And usually you don't have that with the Mandela effect. You usually have all this evidence that says this is how it's always been. You guys are mass misremembering this whole thing. But this is kind of different because there's a lot of evidence for both. So let's just go ahead and say the majority rules that it's not Mandela effect. Okay, if it's not a Mandela effect, why, why do this? Why change the song to not include the three words? What what purpose does that bring to this? Like, what what value does it bring to this song? Yeah, uh, none. Like, not including those words takes value away from the song. Because now when I hear the song, all I can think is this sounds wrong at the end. It's, it's not right. You know, I feel off. Yeah. So here's why I do think it's a Mandela effect for at least for us in the United States. Because according to what you've said, let's let's believe that there are two different versions. I'm okay with believing that the UK version or the European version has of the world us doesn't then tell me why i'm listening to the us version a thousand times i said right yeah why do i believe it says of the world at what point did i believe that because i would have had to have heard at some point the european version and now here's your answer because in the mighty ducks 2 the very end they're singing the song around the campfire and they say of the world now mighty ducks 2 i'm a young impressionable kid watching that loving it hear it that's why i get stuck in my head so i believe personally that is where it got stuck in my head is because of mighty ducks 2 now why would Mighty Ducks 2 use the European version? Is hockey like a... I, outside of, what I guess, what, Iceland, right? Uh, Canada. Uh, Canada. But, I mean, if we're saying the European version, I don't, I'm not familiar with, like, a ton of European countries that are, like, super, super good at hockey. Maybe I'm wrong, but... No, Russia? Uh... I don't know. Was this like outside of that? Was Muddy Ducks like an international success? I doubt that. Let's see. I'll look it up. I mean, I, I'm I'm assuming it is. It was successful enough that they made multiple films. But why would anybody in another country? I just don't think that movie would resonate as much as. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, my keyboard has died, so <laughs> it it is all sorts of bad over on my end. What Scott. is happening it over is there? It's all man. sorts of bad, so I can't. Have you, have you been EMP'd? I might have been, but talk about the She-Hulk trailer. Okay. Yeah. Well, so let's just quickly wrap up the We Are the Champions thing, and then let's just briefly talk about that. That's not related to Mandela Effect, but I want to talk about it. So I haven't seen it yet. I'm I'm gonna react to it live on YouTube, but I've heard a lot about it. Okay, so if you're gonna react to react to it live, you don't want me to lead the witness then, right? You don't want me to talk about it? Oh, you're fine to talk about it because I've already heard people talk about it. I'm okay. just going to watch it and then my instant reactions are gonna be like on YouTube as I watch it. Sure. But you can you can tell me about it. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just finish up the Wheel of Champions thing. I would like to just say if you're listening, put in the comments text us, email us, call us, see us face to face, tell us, do you believe it's a Mandela effect or not? I go back and forth. I know. I think I said earlier, I believe it is a Mandela effect, 
because being in the U.S., how did I hear about it? Well, I guess the only way I would have heard it is through Mighty Ducks. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like, <laughs> but then I think about like all all the other Mandela effects. Really, I don't find any evidence of what I believe being true. In this, I see it. Like I see that it does save the world. Maybe at, at other times I came across it. I don't know. So. If you don't believe this is an actual Mandela effect, let us know. We can delete the episode. No one will ever know we ever did it. But it's worth a discussion. Yeah, it's worth a discussion for sure. Whether it is or it isn't, it's worth a discussion. Um, because it's interesting enough. And it's like, you know, this is the, the reaction. You know, what I'm reading, the explanation is provided by one guy on some site that Norton antivirus doesn't trust. So who knows? This guy could be a liar. I, again, I've never heard the UK version or at least that I can, you know, that I know. Why would I, why, why would I ever seek out the UK version of the song? And I don't have a vinyl record player. So I, I agree. The only version I've ever heard outside of mighty ducks is the U S version, which clearly doesn't have it, but I remember it very vividly. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, interested to hear what everyone else thinks. It's fun to talk about. Fun to have something that's more on our side. Where we do believe that it says of the world. Um, I just find it a little unique. Why does the U.S. always have to try to mess things up? We always try to... Do our own versions oh, of things. That's that's a that's a conversation that we can talk <laughs> about for forty five minutes. I think outside of oh, the easily. Mandela effect, as I descend into graininess, more yeah. and more graininess. Yeah, you got grainy there. I don't know what happened. What the hell is that. going on? I it looks like I'm I'm like an illustration. Like looks, I'm not even a real person anymore. It looks kind of cool though. I'll be honest. I mean, I guess like I'm a like I'm <laughs> filmed and freaking you know. I don't know. Like I'm in a movie from 1980. I'm from the year this song came out. And the, that's, this is like a part of like a found film, you know, like it does look like that. That's what it looks like a little bit. And not like obviously wobbling around like a found film would be. I don't understand this. I have an Elgato face cam. I do not remember reading that this was a feature on the Elgato face cam. Well, so I have no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> it is. It's a new feature. Everyone loves it. So to close, yeah, to close out the episode, we're going to talk quickly about She-Hulk. I watched the trailer. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'll be honest, I couldn't decide if I wanted to laugh or <laughs> be absolutely upset that they, <laughs> that they thought that this was going to pass. I can't wait. It. I cannot wait. It is so think of um okay think of two people in the Avengers okay okay you have the Hulk obviously CGI yeah still looks a lot like Mark Ruffalo but obviously CGI but pretty Which good is, CGI yeah. like yeah pretty good yeah and then you have Gamora who is okay. not yeah. C- not CGI'd. No. But very green. <laughs> yes. They did not paint this actress green. They chose to go the full CGI route. <laughs> and it looks terrible. I've heard it looks so bad. I... For... Okay, so... Disney Plus is where this is going to release, right? This is the uh, yeah a series. Of right? course, it is. Yeah, no one would pay to go see a okay. She-Hulk movie <laughs> in the theater. Yes, clearly this is Disney Plus. Okay, so Disney Plus usually eight to ten episodes for a season, right? Yeah. So I think something like that. Yeah, you're recording more than a movie. I get that. 
I mean, just like the hours that go into it. I mean, it's 10, 8 to 10 hours of footage versus two and a half for a movie. But you're telling me that you can't commit as an actor or actress to just painting yourself every day for your Well, they had to make her... They had to make her giant. Okay. Right? That's the... Then, but at least when you CGI, now you're working with a base that's already the color that you need it to be. This, they are there. It is awful. I don't know. I don't know enough about <laughs> it. I, I truthfully, I, I, maybe I shouldn't be talking. Oh, you can't. to talk about it because I don't know anything about it. But a roommate of mine, um, when I was in high school, or sorry, not high school, a uh, roommate of mine in college, he ended up going to Hollywood and he's been credited in some movies um, for like working on them, not an actor. And if I remember correctly, in uh, Kong Skull Island, his job was to like make sure that the CGI hair of Kong was like accurate, like flowing in the right direction if there was wind. Um, you know, or if there's light on it, that like the hair in certain spots was lighter where it should have been and darker. So I remember hearing stories about that and being like, that can't believe that was someone's job to do that. One. Right. Incredible. Obviously, the attention to detail needed to be there. The CGI in that movie is very good. Yeah. But what I don't understand is that movie, Avengers their two and a half hours they committed for a shorter amount of time why is disney not committing for she hulk if they want this to be a success well, it needs to look good and it doesn't look i don't good. i agree and you could have done this with practical effects if you chose the right woman so let's i mean let's just be honest there are muscular women out there who you could have had play this role painted her green and the way you and you know what too the whole like she needs to be a giant thing which i've seen some screenshots of her like being a giant and it's like just cringe level hilarious like i cannot wait to watch this trailer um i you could film them using camera effects to make them look like a giant they do this in wrestling all the time i mean they build these guys in wrestling as like seven foot tall and they might not be but if you stand them next to somebody who's short, they're going to look tall. So you just, you, you can, and you can like angle the camera to make them look tall. I mean, this is like basic film 101. You can do this. They do it with Versus, Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings in The Hobbit. There you go. Yep. Versus, oh, well, let's just completely throw the computer person in there, which is going to look like crap in 10 years. I mean, if you think this looks bad now, imagine watching She-Hawk in 10 years. It's going to be unwatchable. You're going to, you're going to be laughing at it. It's going to be so bad. Yeah, and so but I don't know that. Uh, so do I, they expect this to be successful? I mean, I don't know. They put a lot of money it's into She-Hawk. it. It's She-Hawk. Well, so here's my thing: is it? I don't think it would have been as bad. I think looking at it for what it is for her, like it's it's not great. Like the actress, I know nothing about. She might do a great job acting as a She-Hulk and as whatever the She-Hulk's human name is. I don't know. I have never. I don't either. But whoever it is, she might do a fantastic job and might have been the right person for it based off of skills. The body type, you're right. They could have picked somebody else if they wanted to have the more physical yeah. effects. But the CGI is, is awful for her. But I think what makes it even worse is that the Hulk is in the show too. They're standing side by side and you see how good one is and how terrible the other one is. So it's almost <laughs> like they are like, oh, let's just like, I don't know, the same code probably for the CGI uh, Hulk. They just like copy paste into She-Hulk and then have Mark yep. Ruffalo just record a new voice. And they just use that and they just didn't want to take the time with her. I don't know. We'll hear from you in your live Oh yeah, I so, cannot wait. I'm so, gonna shred this thing apart if it's really bad. I'm I'm super excited to do it. So, and and 
you know, also, by the way, I think it's fair to say this. Edward Norton is a better Hulk than Mark Ruffalo. Okay, so we obviously have gotten way far off the Mandela effect one, <laughs> but it's that's right. okay. Um, I would agree. I thought that his was really, really good. Uh, Eric Bana is his is not good. Um, his story was more like a love story to me than than anything else. Uh, his version, I thought Edward Norton's version was fantastic. Um, yes. You know, but to be honest, Mark Ruffalo, his Hulk does fit better in with the Avengers, the way that that movie was cast. I don't think that the way they shot Edward Norton's Hulk would have done as well because it would have fought for like a top spot in like a favorite character. And Disney really needed to bank on uh Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man being the lead. This is true. And I think that... Edward Norton, far superior actor to damn near everybody in those he, Marvel movies. He's he's a good actor. And I don't know that... It's incredible. Uh, I don't know that he would have had a problem saying, like, I'll play second to him. Like, I mean, he was second to Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Um, true. He's probably been second to a lot of people. I don't think he would have had a problem with it. I just think it would have on screen been like well, who's like, who's the leader of this group really? And I don't want to make it sound like Mark Ruffalo is like not capable. Oh, of uh, you can make it sound like that. No, he's, he's beta. <laughs> he's a hundred percent a beta, beta male. He's, uh, he's also psychotic. He's like psychotic. Uh, L- listen to him. Go read his tweets. He's, he's psychotic and he's, yeah, he's total beta energy. I mean, you, Mark Ruffalo walks up to you. Are you afraid? Are you like clutching your wife, uh, afraid that she'll leave you for him? No, of course not. You're yeah. But are take you him, doing take that with Edward lunch. Norton? <laughs> oh yeah, because Edward Norton is he could act his way out. Of, he, Edward Norton. Have you ever seen Primal Fear? Oh my gosh, uh, American History X. These mm. movies are, and Edward Norton's pretty jacked in that one. That's probably a controversial movie these days. That is, it, I'm telling you, yes, I'd be more afraid if Edward Norton. Okay. Who would I be afraid that my wife would cheat on me more with? Edward Norton. She'd go to lunch with Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> Maybe she has already. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we've gotten so far away from our topic here. But I'm That's interested. Right. You have your – you're doing that live, you said? Yeah. Okay. So I think tomorrow. Well, I'm. you know what? I'm not going to do it live. I'm going to record it and okay. post it. Well, it's not long enough to do it live. Tune in to Ludacars and Plays to watch that on YouTube. I'm excited to see what your opinions are after you see the trailer. Um, for anyone That's else, a show we should review together. You should no, get Disney Plus back just to watch... Are you, you know, going to get Disney Plus back just to watch She-Hulk? I'm getting it to watch Obi-Wan so I can talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> mistakes. Anyway, I know. I don't want to do it. Anyway. It's been great chatting through our most recent Mandela effect of the, we are the champions. Uh, we look forward to next week's episode, which we are not going to reveal to you at this time, mainly because we don't know what it is either yet. Um, we'll figure it out, but we'll figure it out. So we're excited. Um, thank you to everyone listening. Thank you to everyone who tunes in. We appreciate it. It's fun for us. Even if no one listened, we'd still do it because it's a blast. Um, that's right. But we appreciate all those who listen and those who give their feedback I think we're still having some audio issues. I'll be honest, Scott. I'm trying to figure those out, but um, it's getting better. I can hear you. No, I'm saying like when we, we like the recording, like when we post it on YouTube. Really? Yeah, on YouTube it comes across really clean. Both of us are really like the volume is level. Um, but okay. on, the, on the podcasting apps, for some reason, my voice seems to be higher than yours. So I'm still trying That's to figure strange. it out. I'm hoping that this new recording uh application yeah. we're using will also help with it so it is what it is um but that's all we have i don't think else scott any final words no i i yes this is very fun i like this the, and i you know what i think people do watch and they do listen i bet we have so many listeners we don't even know we might be very famous in like japan we could be um but 
the analytics say otherwise <laughs> they lie they so. lie don't you can't you you don't listen to the analytics they fake news that's fair fake news all right well thank you everybody we appreciate it we'll catch you next week bye everybody